Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 9 of the chapter Equilibrium. In part 7 and 8, I told you about homogeneous equilibria. The topic of this video is heterogeneous equilibrium. When I told you about homogeneous equilibrium, I told you that a homogeneous equilibrium is one where all the reactants and the products, they are in the same phase. So the reaction mixture is homogeneous. So what would heterogeneous equilibrium be? A heterogeneous equilibrium would be one where the reactants and the products, all the reactants and the products are not in the same phase. They have different physical states. So an equilibrium, which is a system in which more than one phase is present would be, or the reaction mixture consists of more than one phase would be a heterogeneous equilibrium. An example here is water liquid is an equilibrium with water gas that is uh, at its boiling point water and water vapor are in equilibrium with each other. So the temperature is fixed and the two states are in equilibrium with each other. So since you have two physical states water present although the uh, reactant and the product are the same substance that is water yet they are present in two different physical states therefore such an equilibrium is a heterogeneous equilibrium. Another example is calcium hydroxide which is in the solid state and aqueous that is water is in equilibrium with calcium ions in the aqueous state and the hydroxide ions in the aqueous state. This equilibrium has aqueous, aqueous are all liquid states and calcium hydroxide which is solid. So again we have two different phases the solid and the aqueous phase therefore this is a heterogeneous equilibrium. When you have a heterogeneous equilibrium in the case of homogeneous equilibrium if you remember for all equilibria we calculate the equilibrium constant because the concentrations of the reactants and products when equilibrium is established the concentration becomes fixed. And therefore, we calculate the equilibrium constant, which is the ratio of the concentrations of the products to the ratio to those of the uh, concentrations of the reactants, and which is known as Kc. And we do so in terms of pressure also for gaseous reactants and products, which is known as Kp. But when you have heterogeneous equilibrium, there is one thing that you should know. When we say concentration, we mean it is the number of moles of that particular solute in a solvent. When we talk of gases or anything, when we are talking of the concentration, we are talking of how much of it is present in a whole. But when you have pure solids and liquids, a pure substance has a 100% concentration. If you really look at it, whether you take a small uh, one cubic centimeter of a liquid or you take a bulk in a tank full of water, the concentration of water, if it is pure, will remain the same. Whether it is very present in a very small quantity or it is present in a large quantity. So we say when you have pure solids and liquids, talking of their concentration or equilibrium concentration, uh, it's a little silly because whether it was present in the reactant phase or it is present in the products, the pure solid or a liquid has a fixed composition. It already has a constant concentration because the concentration is 100%. So, we say for pure substances like solids and liquids, the concentration, which is known as the molar concentration. What is molar concentration? It is moles per liter. Moles of that particular substance in one liter of the solution or in one liter of the reaction mixture. So when we say it is in one liter, a pure solid, a pure liquid does not have that kind of a concentration. So when you have a heterogeneous equilibrium and we are calculating the equilibrium constant of a heterogeneous equilibrium, we have to bring this into consideration. We have to keep this thing in mind that if there is a solid or a liquid, its concentration is not going to change. It is fixed. And if its concentration is not going to change, its pressure is also not going to change. So whether we talk of Kc or Kp, when you have pure solids and liquids, we do not take the, their concentrations into account when we are calculating the equilibrium constant. Let me just take an example and explain this to you. 
but but before I do that, let me also tell you this: that on the other hand, if you have a gas, the concentration of the gas and the concentration of any substance that is a solute dissolved in uh, a solvent, that is, uh, with, if the solvent, let us say, is water, an aqueous solution, the concentrations in that case are significant. They are important because they do vary as the reaction. Uh, moves on and when it establishes equilibrium the concentration would be different and the concentrations of gases and aqueous substances or those which are dissolved in solvents would be different before the equilibrium is established and they would be different when the equilibrium is established so they vary now let us come to our example you have calcium carbonate which is a solid it decomposes into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide on heating and an equilibrium is established at a certain temperature. So equilibrium constant according to our knowledge till now Kc would be equal to the concentration the product of the concentrations of the products raised to their stoichiometric coefficients divided by the product of the concentrations of the reactants raised to their respective stoichiometric coefficients. So what would the uh, Kc be in this case? It will be concentration of calcium oxide. Now, it is important when you have a heterogeneous equilibrium, it is important to write the physical state. So, in the case of a heterogeneous equilibrium, we have calcium oxide solid concentration into the concentration of carbon dioxide gas divided by the concentration of the reactant that is calcium carbonate solid and we put a bracket that is molar concentration. And I already explained to you that molar concentration of solids or liquids, pure solids or liquids, it is, it's foolish to talk of their molar concentrations because there is one mole in one mole. It is, uh, or rather, uh, it has, it is a hundred percent pure substance. So it does not have, it is hundred percent pure. It is all of it. So you can't, its concentration is not varying. So when you have to modify the equilibrium constant uh, value, and how do you do that? You ignore the concentration of calcium oxide and calcium carbonate or let me say that you assume these to also be constant. So we do not consider them, just cancel them out. So we modify the e equation for equilibrium constant. Kc becomes equal to only the concentration of carbon dioxide in the gaseous state. And if we were talking in terms of pressure, then Kb would also have depended only on the concentration of carbon dioxide gas because the partial pressures of these other physical states, they do not change because they are pure states and their partial pressures uh, do not really matter. So Kp and Kc would be modified only to have the gaseous or the aqueous or those substances which are dissolved in some solvent. Also, you remember that any equilibrium is established at a fixed temperature. Equilibrium, for equilibrium to be established, the temperature has to be fixed. So we say at constant temperature, for example, if this equation, <coughs> we consider the same equation, at 1100 Kelvin, the pressure of carbon dioxide, that is partial pressure of carbon dioxide, is 2 into 10 to the power 5 pascals, right? So if this is the, the uh, partial pressure of carbon dioxide or we say that there is, a, there is a constant concentration naturally because at equilibrium the concentration and the pressure of the components they become fixed. So the partial pressure is 2 into 10 to the power 5 pascals and whatever the concentration is it is fixed of carbon dioxide and this fixed concentration and this fixed partial pressure are in equilibrium. This carbon dioxide is in equilibrium with calcium oxide and calcium carbonate in the reaction mixture. All of them are fixed. So Kb which is, is equal to the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in other words is given to us which is 2 into 10 to the power 5 pascals. Now the problem is that whenever we use Kc and Kb they would have a unit. Why would they have a unit? Because when we are talking of pascals and the pressure has been reported in terms of pascals, we, the answer we get is in pascals. But Kc, we would not like it to have units. We rather prefer them not having units. And that is possible when you have the reactants and the products in their standard states. Why? Because in the standard state, if you remember, the pressure of any substance in, a in its standard state is one bar. The pressure is fixed. 
and one bar we know is equal to 10 to the power 5 pascals. So we prefer reporting Kp and Kc without units or we want them to be dimensionless quantities. I'll tell you why we want them to be dimensionless quantities too. But in this case, let me first discuss this and then I'll come to that part, why we want it to be dimensionless. If we divide this by 10 to the power 5 pascal to get it in bars, the 10 to the power 5 pascal, it gets cancelled out. And since you have 10 to the power 5 pascal in numerator and denominator, it gets cancelled out. And in the standard state, the partial pressure of carbon dioxide or rather Kp becomes equal to only a numerical value which is equal to 2. 2.00 and that is what we want our Kp and Kc to be like. We don't want dimensions because that complicates it. Since Kp and Kc are ratios of concentrations and pressures respectively, if they are ratios of concentrations and pressures, you should have concentration terms in the numerator, concentration terms in the denominator which should cancel out. But due to stoichiometry, you will have two concentration terms here. For example, just take this example. <coughs> And let us for a moment ignore that it is a heterogeneous equilibrium. If we actually had this was a liquid, this was also a liquid, um, or rather aqueous, this would be in moles per liter, this would also be in moles per liter, and this is also in moles per liter. In the numerator, we have moles per liter into moles per liter, we are only talking of the units. And in the denominator, we have only moles per liter. So one of them gets cancelled out. And the Kc should have the units moles per liter, because one of them is left behind. And that is what we do not want. Depending in some equations, you will have the, uh, the units will be cancelled out. But in some equations, the units will not be cancelled out because of the stoichiometric coefficients. And that is where we try to write down the reactants and products in their standard states to get dimensionless values for Kc and Kp. Now, equivalent, both of them are called equilibrium constants. And their numerical value, whether it is 2 or whatever its concentration was, that numerical value would depend on which unit, which property are we using. Are we talking of equilibrium constant in terms of pressure or are we talking of equilibrium constant in terms of uh, concentration? So the numerical value will depend on that, but the units will be cancelled out if we calculate it in terms of the, um, in, if we calculate it in, the standard states. So coming down back to this point once more, the units of Kc and Kp, they depend on the units in which we have measured the concentration and the pressure. Concentration is usually measured in terms of molarity, that is moles per liter. And pressure may be uh, measured in terms of bar, it may be in terms of atmosphere, it may be in terms of pascals, kilopascals, you can have different units. So that can make, that can cause the units of Kc and Kp to vary depending on what is your measurement of the concentration and the pressure, in which units are you measuring it. And for example, you have hydrogen and iodine, they uh, combine to form hydrogen iodide and an equilibrium is established between them. So equilibrium constant, what will it be? It will be Hi to the power Kc would be Hi, concentration of Hi to the power 2 upon concentration of H2 into concentration of I2. So you have moles per liter square in the numerator and your moles per liter into moles per liter again moles per liter square. So all units will get cancelled out and whatever equilibrium constant you get, it will have no units. It is the same if we took partial pressures. Partial pressure, let us say we took it in atmospheres. We have uh, two atmospheres, atmosphere square in the numerator and atmosphere into atmosphere is again atmosphere square in the denominator, which gets cancelled out. So Kc and Kp would have no units or it will be dimensionless, which makes it easier. But all equations are not like this. You may have an equation like this one, N2O4 is a gas, it gives you two NO2, decomposes to give you two molecules of NO2. So what would equilibrium constant be here in terms of concentration? Concentration of NO2 to the power 2, that is moles per liter to the power 2, since we are talking of units, divided by moles per liter of N2O4. So you will get the uh, equilibrium constant will have a unit because only one of them will be cancelled. So the unit of Kc would be moles per liter. And if we were calculating 
the kp in terms of bar then we would have obtained a unit bar but in order to have it to be dimensionless we choose the reactants and products to be in their standard states so why do we do that because that in the standard state the pressure is one bar for any substance and we talk of that substance in reference to that one bar the pressure let us say it has a pressure of uh, one of the reactants has a pressure of four bars or one of the products has the uh, pressure of four bars at the equilibrium when equilibrium is established but when we refer it to the standard state which is one bar so we put we divide it by one bar so four bars divided by one bar will give you a numerical value four so when you have numerical values without units when you calculate the kp it will not have any units it will be dimensionless similarly if we had used the concentration and we were finding kc and the uh, concentration let us say was 4 moles per liter or 4 molar solution then the concentration of a substance in its standard state is 1 molar so we will whatever the reactant or product is we will divide it by 1 molar so you have that let us say 4 moles per liter was the concentration divided by 1 mole per liter the mole per liter gets cancelled and you get only 4 so again when you calculate kc by doing this for all the reactants and products you get no dimensions for kc and we prefer to do that we would like the kc and kp constants to be dimensionless and the only thing is that the numerical value how much of it is would depend on whether we are talking of the thing in terms of concentration or are we measuring in terms of pressure so let me just read this that for standard state pressure is fixed that is one bar and concentration is molar one mole one mole per liter so if pressure of a gas in the standard state is 4 bar, then 4 bar upon 1 bar would be equal to 4, which is dimensionless. That is, similarly, all concentrations are measured with respect to 1 molar solution. So if you have 4 molar divided by 1 molar, you will get only 4, which is again dimensionless. So we take two more examples here of um, heterogeneous equilibria. Just to make this um, entire whatever we studied a little clear to you. You have the purification of nickel. Nickel, which is solid, it is treated with carbon monoxide and 4 moles of carbon monoxide, which is in the gaseous state, and it results in the formation of nickel carbonyl and the reaction mixture, it establishes an equilibrium. And now in the mixture, we have both the reactants and the product. So what would be the uh, Kc? How would you calculate Kc for this reaction? What do you have to see first thing? What are the physical states? If there are any pure solids or liquids, they will not be included in the equilibrium constant equation. Whether we are talking of equilibrium constant in terms of pressure or in terms of, um, uh, in terms of concentration. For pure solids and pure liquids, we do not include those terms. So Kc here would be, you have gaseous product, so you write concentration of the gaseous product raised to its, the power of its stoichiometric coefficient. There is no stoichiometric coefficient or it is 1, so no power or it is the power is 1, divided by carbon monoxide, which is also gaseous. And since it has a stoichiometric coefficient of 4 to the power of 4. And nickel, since it's a solid, it is not included in the equilibrium constant equation. The last example, you have silver oxide, which is a solid, combining with two nitric acid aqueous. Now solid will not be included. Pure solids, pure liquids should not be included. So this will not be included. We'll give you two AgNO3 aqueous will be included, plus water, liquid. Liquid again is not included. So equilibrium constant in terms of concentrations would be equal to AgNO3. That is the product to the power of its stoichiometric coefficient 2 divided by HNO3, which is the reactant equals to the power of its stoichiometric coefficient, which is 2. And we ignore Ag2O because it's a solid and we ignore water because it's a pure liquid. So this was heterogeneous equilibria. In the next video, I'll solve one solved example of the numerical problem uh, dealing with heterogeneous equilibria. So if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye bye for now.